Hello and welcome to Learning in Technology. My name is Frank and I'm glad that you're here. Have you ever been in a situation as an instructor where you have maybe a classroom set of iPads and you really like the learning apps, they're great, iPads are a really useful tool in education and a lot of times we can get lower end iPads at a reasonable cost or even donated older iPads but you also wish that you had the full functionality of a desktop computer where you had programming and you could get into the file system and you could teach computer science concepts or electronics? Well, we can combine the new Raspberry Pi 400, which is a Raspberry Pi built right into a keyboard, comes with a mouse. I did a different video on that. We can combine that with an iPad so that we create kind of the best of both worlds. It's not an ideal production system for somebody who's a complete Raspberry Pi enthusiast or somebody who wants a complete iPad environment. It's a hybrid between the two, but it does work pretty well. And I think it brings up some real possibilities to expand what we're teaching in our classrooms, to go full desktop in some cases, to go app in some cases, so we can switch between the two quite easily. I'll show you what I mean in this video. Okay, so here's the setup I have. I have uh, the Raspberry Pi 400 here, and I've got the mouse. And I've got it plugged into power and I've got the mouse plugged in. But th that's all I have plugged in. I don't have the display plugged in. What I've done is I've taken a Raspberry Pi and I've connected it to a regular monitor and then I've installed VNC. I've, I've allowed VNC and then on my iPad I'm downloading the VNC app and I'm running a VNC connection to my I, uh, Raspberry Pi on my iPad. And then if I'm done, I can just, you know, click the home button, work with some apps, run VNC and work with the keyboard as if I'm working on my Raspberry Pi. So it is going through a wireless network. So there's a wireless network that's basically connecting these two things together. But what it does allow me to do is get that desktop on my Raspberry Pi and work with programming, do some Python programming, some scratch programming, even play Minecraft. Whatever I want to do with a desktop computer, that's what I'm doing with this connection. And it looks like a little computer as well. The, there's a couple of caveats there. When I'm working with apps, of course, the keyboard doesn't work. It's just when I'm working with the computer desktop, it does. Let's go have a look at that. So when I first got the Raspberry Pi 400, what I did is, is you have to connect it to a TV at first or to a monitor. And then what you're going to do is if you go into the Raspberry Pi operating system, go into preferences and go into the Raspberry Pi configuration, the way that I'm going to turn my iPad into a monitor for my Raspberry Pi 4000 is I'm going to actually run VNC on my iPad and I'll show you. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have to set up the Raspberry Pi so that it allows for remote access. To do that, I'm going to go into my interfaces and my VNC, I'm going to switch that to enable. So now I've got the VNC enabled and now I'm going to go over to my iPad and I can unplug the monitor at this point, just leave the power on for the Raspberry Pi, but the Raspberry Pi is now accessible through VNC. The one thing that you'll need to do is make sure you take note on VNC as to what your IP address is. And you can see here that I'm connected to a local area network, so I've got a private IP address range. And my latency on my network is pretty good. If you get a lot of latency, it's not going to be the greatest solution. But the nice thing is that, you know, a lot of times you don't want to have to have a separate monitor. Maybe you have an old iPad somewhere around and this will work on that iPad as long as you can install VNC on it. So now that I've got VNC and I know the address for my uh, Raspberry Pi, I can now go over to my iPad. Let's go have a look at that. I'm on my iPad. And what I'll do is I'll just go into the App Store. So we'll just go into the App Store here. And underneath the App Store, I can download VNC. So if we go into search, and I'll just do VNC. So you'll see VNC Viewer is here. Underneath VNC Viewer, you can see I've got the remote desktop. And I'm just going to open it. I've obviously downloaded it already. So here's my iPad, and I've installed VNC Viewer. If I go in there, you can see I have a couple of Raspberry Pis running at the moment. Um, 
It's kind of neat because of course I could have a whole bunch, but anyways, that, that's another story. So I'll click on the Raspberry Pi that I want to connect to. And you'll notice I have my Raspberry Pi 400 here and I have a keyboard up here. I have to put my password on the iPad keyboard, not the Raspberry Pi. This will not interface as, a, as an iPad keyboard. It's the Raspberry Pi 400. So let me go ahead and put in my password. I'll just blur out this part of the video. Okay, so now I've logged in and you can see I've got the, this is me connected to the Raspberry Pi. I'll pinch that in a little bit just so that I have the full screen there. And now I can start using my mouse. I'm moving around and I can start using this keyboard. There is, this is a little icon. I'm just gonna move the mouse out, out of the way. It can be a little bit of a hassle, but the cool part here is that I now have a full um, computer. So let's go into, for example, anything I might use. So if I go into LibreOffice here, I can now run this, go in there and say, this is my Raspberry Pi 400. So I'm using my Raspberry Pi 400 here. Um, I can go in here, do whatever I want. And the cool thing is I can now do things like programming. So I could go in, go into Python and have a full environment here where I can start using desktop applications, even though I'm on my iPad. Now, the one thing is to just be aware that this keyboard is the uh, Raspberry Pi, not the iPad, same with the mouse. So if I switch out and I go back to the iPad, you know, if I wanna go into something here, like, uh, you know, if I go into some, I don't know, any, any application in here, if I go into, you know, some application here, if I want to work on the keyboard, I have to work on the iPad keyboard. But again, if I go out, I can go right back and be on my Raspberry Pi. It's a neat little way of taking advantage of this screen and using it with the Raspberry Pi 400 and having the ability to go out, do a little bit of appy type stuff on here, where I can go in and do whatever type of app stuff I want to do, and then come right back and go into click I can go into the Pi and do any type of Pi stuff that I want to do. I hope this video gave you some ideas, ways that you can incorporate the Raspberry Pi into your classroom and still use your iPads as the screens for those Raspberry Pis. It's a really neat setup and one that I think if you experiment with, you'll find is very useful and more importantly, helps your students learn. Let me know what you think. I am very interested in how you might be adopting these technologies in your classroom. If you're interested in this channel, go ahead and subscribe. And if you like this video, like and share with colleagues that might benefit from it. And as always, comment down below so we can have a dialogue on this. Here's some other videos from my channel. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.